Slimehouse TV, myself, The Orcane. Hope everybody is good. Hope everybody's buzzing for Toy Talk Tuesday. And hold tight to Slime Alliance. If you're watching this a little bit more in advanced, I'll talk a little bit about my new Patreon tier at the end of the video. So in today's episode, I want to talk about these guys. The Beast Wars. What do you know about Beast Wars? So Beast Wars came on TV in the mid-90s. And at the time when I watched it, I was intrigued by the CGI art style, but I was definitely feeling the fact that it wasn't my Transformers. Growing up, I was a huge fan of Gen 1 Transformers. The original Moda Meets the Eye cartoon is like my favourite animated story of all time. I know it word for word. Ask anybody that's watched it with me. So when this Beast Wars show came on telly at first, I was like, do you know what? I don't know if this is for me. These aren't my Transformers. This isn't Cliff Jumper and Ironhide and Thrust and Dirge and Ramjet and Powerglide and all them guys. These aren't my Transformers. But after a few episodes, I really did start to like it, especially when I realised that this story that was taking place actually was part of the larger Transformers lore and it was canon and that these were all on Earth whilst all the Decepticons and the Transformers were all unconscious inside Teletran 1 before the volcano wakes up Skywarp and he revives Megatron like Megatron, my leader. And there were some really good episodes, even stories where the Predacons and the Maximals entered Teletran 1 whilst all the other Autobots and Decepticons were unconscious. There was even an episode where Starscream's unconscious ghost possesses Waspinator. And this was a time in the mid 90s when CGI animated cartoons was like really fresh and new and innovative. And we got really dark animated series like Reboot. Again, another one of the greatest animated stories ever told. And us kids in the 90s were lapping it up. And as with all good 80s and 90s action cartoons, they were primarily created to sell toys to kids. Even though ironically, so many of the toys that they made for this brand never even were featured in the show. But there were so many cool characters and I've got quite a few Beast Wars stored away and dotted around on various shelves and things like that. But today I'm just going to talk about the two big opposing forces in the show. Megatron of the Predacons and Optimus Primal of the Maximals. Let's check them out. So if you was a kid growing up in the 90s, chances are if you didn't have these toys, somebody you know did. And they have a lot of distinguishing features in my opinion that still makes them feel fresh and stand out all these years later. And these two didn't feel like your old school typical brittle Transformers toys, they felt like proper action figures in both creature and robot forms. So if we look at Megatron first, not to be confused with the Transformers Megatron who shares the same name as this guy but is a completely separate character. Also, with how popular Jurassic Park had made dinosaurs just a couple of years earlier, it made so much sense to create a Transformer of a T-Rex. Obviously we had Grimlock before that and Trypticon, but in my opinion he was always more of a Godzilla than a T-Rex. But this was the first time that we'd seen a T-Rex Transformer in organic form, and it's safe to say that they absolutely knocked it out of the park with this sculpt. I love how he's purple and green, I always associate that colour combo with retro bad guys like Beetlejuice and the Combaticons and Dr. X. Purple and green is always fucking bad boy and this guy has that colour scheme but it's much more muted so that he feels a lot less colourful and a bit more natural. His face is ferocious, he looks hench and hunched over like any good T-Rex should and he overall is just a super fitting creature design and choice for the main big bad guy of the show. So if we look at transforming him into his robot form, which is a lot easier than trying to turn him back into the T-Rex because that can be a bit of a bastard to get it all to sit right. In the show, the transforming takes like half a second. It's like and they make it look so fluid and easy. But in reality, some of these Beast Wars toys can be like a fucking puzzle box to work out. There's always that weird little bit that won't sit right and you have to pull it all apart and start over again. These things though, very much like I spoke about in that Mighty Max episode, they're just a testament to the ingenuity of the people that were creating them. Having two solid characters both in one toy and making them slot together so perfectly must have been a real chore, especially before the days of 3D printing and the very early days of computer aided design and that kind of thing. And I get it that by this point we'd put men on the moon, we'd built rocket ships and jet engines and machines that can breathe for you and all that shit. And we are just talking about toys here, but it still impresses me nonetheless. So now we've got Megatron in his robot form and as you can see his head is very much a throwback to the original Megatron, that helmet that looks like some kind of pistol hammer. And this is what I'm talking about with the movement on these things. Some of the old Transformers, they felt very much like they were a car first and a robot second. And that they were really not that much of an action figure and more of a gimmick. But these dudes really do feel like a toy that a kid could play with and pose and reenact proper fight scenes with. 
I did always think as well that it was really weird how they utilised the tail and the T-Rex's head as Megatron's hand. In fact, as a kid, I never really liked it. I felt that characters like this guy and Dinobot and Black Arachnia, etc. would have all been better with something that looked more like actual hands rather than the weird claws that they gave a lot of them. Because after all, these characters aren't like feral monsters or kaiju and shit. They're actual sentient robots that can think and create and build. And it always felt like it would be a real setback having to go through your entire life with a hand that was a fucking T-Rex's mouth. Did anyone else feel the same way when they watched this shit as a kid or was it just me? All in all though, the figure does stand really well and I like how you can position his little T-Rex arms up behind his head and then open up all his back making him look like he's got bat wings or some shit. Overall, a very good figure and a very good look for the leader of the Predacons in the series. Okay, so looking at Optimus Primal now, being a kid that grew up fanboying King Kong movies, I've always got love for a big mean looking gorilla and this design ticks all the boxes in that regard for me. He's a silverback through and through this guy, he's got a dope mean snarling face, you've got them broad shoulders, he walks on his knuckles, dude looks like he's ready to do some damage. And again, very much like I said with the Megatron, this guy being a gorilla is a perfect creature for the leader of a crew of transforming jungle animals. Now this toy transforms back and forth a lot easier than the Megatron does and when he is in his robot form he really does look and feel like a proper action figure that a kid could play with, maybe even more so than most of the others. Again, like Megatron, he's got a head and a face that is a straight throwback to his Gen 1 counterpart. And I love the colour scheme on this guy. Black, white and red with a flash of blue. Always an awesome colour combination for a robot. The same colour scheme as Khan, one of my favourite Z-Bots. This guy does have actual hands as well, the same hands that he has in gorilla form and they can even hold a couple of weapons, he's got this sword which is actually supposed to be one of two but I only have one. They're both identical though so the other side does look just like this and as always, side note, if you've got a spare one of these swords that you're looking to get rid of, drop me a message on Instagram or something because it'd be nice to have this figure fully completed. He also has this wicked ball and chain flail morning star that he keeps locked away in his forearm. And check how fucking metal it is. The mace part of the weapon is actually a screaming human skull. Fuck knows why, but I love it anyway. And then in his other arm, he's got a hidden twin missile launcher. Now both of these figures have little hidden missiles that they can fire at each other. Megatron fires these mad crossbow shaped crescent moons from his thigh armor. He also has this snapper action with his tail and there's even a function where you can pour water into this weird gland in his mouth and squirt it but the little stoppers on these are rubber, they get perished really easy so I'm not going to try and pour water inside. This is also one of the hardest pieces to find from this toy, it's very rare that you find one with this still intact when you find them out in the wild. Optimus Primal has these hidden projectile firing shoulder cannons and also does a couple of weird arm movements with this trigger on his back depending on where you position it. They also both have these wicked battle masks that look completely random compared to the rest of the design of the toy. Optimus Primals is like some weird alien looking bug and Megatron's looks like a mix between Ocean Master and Griffith from Berserk. But either way they're both still mint looking. Later on Megatron also got released in this red variant which is exactly the same as the purple one so it's also interesting to see him in some different colours that look equally as cool. So there you have it, both top boys of the opposing forces of the Beast Wars franchise. Megatron for the Predacons and Optimus Primal for the Maximals. Two awesome 90s action figures who feel very evenly matched on the playing field and two toys that look fucking wicked displayed side by side on any toy shelf. Now these are a couple of toys that in the last year they really have gone up in value. But most toys have gone up in value especially since lockdown and a lot of people started jumping on the toy collecting thing and things like that. They've definitely gone up in value but interestingly there are also a set of toys that have been re-released again last year. Now not all of them but a few of the main characters got re-released last year. I was walking through Smiths, I didn't even know they were coming out. I looked on the shelf and they had Megatron and they had Optimus Primal and they had Rat Trap and some of the others there on the shelf in the exact same package that they were sold in the 90s. I thought they looked fucking awesome. I took some pictures and put them on my socials. And interestingly, there wasn't like revamped toys where they're slightly newer, they're a bit more innovative, they look a bit better sculpted, they're like a new redesign. They were exact pulls from the exact molds that we got back in the 90s. The boxes were pretty much identical apart from maybe like a little change in logos here and there and things like that. And 
this begs the question that we talk about here on Slimehouse TV quite often, especially on Toy Talk Tuesday, and we've covered it in an earlier episode, that does making these toys again and re-releasing them in the exact same paint jobs, in the exact same colours, in the exact same boxes, in the exact same moulds, does that then devalue the originals? What's your opinion on that? Because part of me thinks that, well, do you know what? There's always going to be people that want the originals regardless, and these newer ones being released aren't going to devalue the old ones. They're just another option for people who want to have them what they had as a kid but don't want to pay like the OG prices but then part of me also thinks well if they're exactly the same does that not make these toys worth less than ever now so I do think it's an interesting topic even though we do talk about it quite a bit on this video and I always want to know your opinion on it as a toy collector or from somebody on the outside looking in if you was going to pick up one of the toys that you had as a kid would you be bothered if it was the original OG version or would you be happy to go into Smith's and buy one that's pretty much exactly the same an exact replica from the exact moulds for a fraction of the price I'm always interested to know your opinion on it because there's always those two opposing sides people that want the original they don't care if there's a new one out they want the OG original that is just to know that it's exactly the same or you'll get somebody like me who honestly I don't really mind if it's exactly the same and it looks the same and it's pretty much painted identical then I don't mind having it on my shelf I found a guy on YouTube called Primal Sabbath who is a much bigger Beast Wars fan than I am and has a lot more knowledge on the differences between the old ones and the new ones so I'll put a link to his video in the description below if you want to do more of a deep dive on the differences between these ones and the originals but yeah let me know in the comments below because I'd be really interested to know your opinion on it and I do like to hear from the different opposing sides now me personally i never care about the monetary value of a toy if it's exactly the same and it's an exact replica then i'm happy just to have that one on my shelf i don't really have too many replicas but if there was a, a replica of a toy that i wanted like the mattel kraken for example if they re-released that now and it was exactly it was exactly the same i would happily buy that one and have that on my shelf and then i would never go looking for an old one i would never need to because i had one there the monetary value of these toys is never something that i personally care about i just like cool designs and looking at these dudes they are really fucking cool designs and i hope you think that i covered them pretty good in this video if you do like beast wars content and you want me to do some more then let me know i've got quite a few beast wars tucked away like i said that i haven't featured on the channel that we can have a look at and transform and go through the designs of them and stuff like that so let me know again in the comments below if there's any other beast wars toys that you'd like to see me have a look at in the meantime this is slime house tv i'm theo kane if you've never been here before Go back and binge the back catalogue. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments below your thoughts on today's topic. I'm also on Patreon. As mentioned at the start of this video that I've got a tier on my Patreon called Slime Alliance where you get access to videos a little bit more in advance and also some exclusive content as well. So if that sounds like a bit of you, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Slimehouse TV. I'm also on Instagram. So if you want to hit me up there privately, like I said, I need a sword for my Optimus Primal. Or if there's anything else that you want to talk to me about on there, tag me in your toy room. Let me know if you've got anything that you want to show me or any topics for future toy talk discussions and you don't want to comment publicly then that's also the best place to hit me up in the meantime i'm theo kane this is slime house tv this is toy talk tuesday we do one of these every week so i hope to catch you in the next one until then i'm gone pow <laughs>